Hello everyone, welcome to Linux Unix uh, Tech Channel. This is Dan Calloway, your host. And today I'm going to show you how to install OpenBSD 6.1 Unix with a desktop environment. We're going to be using the XFCE desktop environment because it's lightweight. Uh, so that when we get into OpenBSD 6.1, we will have a GUI rather than just a command line at the TTY. So, uh, I'm going to be demoing that for you today, and so let's get into it. to be uh, demoing that OpenBSD 6.1. Uh, I'm in my Oracle virtual box right now and I'm going to go ahead and set up the uh, virtual machine environment here. Uh, if you're familiar with Oracle vir virtual box that's great. If not you'll need to learn that. Let me go ahead and click on new and then I'm going to type in OpenBSD 6.1 uh, we're going to be using the BSD type and we're going to be using uh, the OpenBSD 64-bit. I'm going to click the next button here and then I'm going to give this uh, virtual machine 2 gigs of RAM, 2048 megabytes. And then I'm going to click uh, next and then I'm going to create the vi virtual device. I'm going to create a VDI of dynamically allocated so it'll expand. And then I'm going to give it initially, or for the total amount, of 60 gigabytes. All right, and let's go ahead and create that virtual machine here. And um, once we get that created, let's go up to settings, make a few adjustments. We're going to go into the processor. We're going to give it two processors since I have an i3 core duo. Um, we're also going to click on storage and go to the virtual CD-ROM drive and select the ISO 61 or install uh, 61 ISO rather uh, so we can install that and audio looks good network we're going to make bridged so we have the same network range as our host uh, let's go ahead and click OK there and then now we can go ahead and launch the installation of OpenBSD 61 I'm going to click view and get to full screen mode uh, and so we're, uh, we're getting the OpenBSD 6.1 launched now. Um, it's actually accessing the CD-ROM and uh, pulling that up. And so as we get into it, I'll explain what we're doing. Here we're going to be installing the, the operating system. We're going to hit an I. We're going to choose the keyboard layout default. Um, we're going to select the host name here. Um, as uh, OpenBSD 6.1. All right, and uh, available network is correct, so I'm going to just hit enter. And uh, we want an IP address, IPv4 address from DHCP, so we're just going to hit enter. And it should go out and query the uh, DHCP server on 192.168.11, and it found found it acknowledged it and we have an IP address now. We do not want an IPv6. Um, Alright, so we're going to uh, use the my.domain here as uh, the default. <clears throat> then uh, here we're going to set a password for root. We've done that now and we're going to say yes to starting SSH. Um, X window, yes, we're not going to do the, the Xeno DM. And then uh, we're going to select uh, Data Pioneer as a user. Uh, Dan Calloway is the uh, person's name, that's me. <clears throat> I'm going to put a password in for Data Pioneer. And uh, we're going to allow uh, root to SSHN, yes. Uh, the time here is correct, America, New York. Um, and we're going to go ahead and set up the hard drive, uh, WD0, and there it is, that's the structure it's going to create for us, um, and then we're going to select that and let it create that for us. 
for the partitioning scheme. All right, once that's completed, um, let's go ahead and get the install sets. And so I'm just going to go HTTP method because that way the path is set automatically for me. We're going to take the defaults here, uh, ftp4.bsd.usa.openbsd.org is good. I don't game, so I'm going to go delete the games here, and I don't need the man pages, so I'm going to omit the man pages. And so, as you can see here, uh, man pages and games will not be installed. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Everything else will be installed here. Uh, this process takes a little bit of time. It's not too bad, so I'm not going to pause the video on this one. Um, but it's going to install each one of these sets one at a time. What's interesting here, I need to explain to you, is it goes out and it fetches each one of these sets from the default um, location uh, through HTTP. Once it fetches, it verifies. In other words, it verifies the signature on the set, and then it uh, installs the set as well. So. Um, it's pretty thorough. Um, this is what I like about OpenBSD Unix uh, in that it uh, does all this automatically for you. Um, and, um, and so you don't have to do it after the fact. Okay. All right. So it's going through the process now. Oh, and by the way, uh, BSD.MP, that's the multiprocessor. Uh, since I did select a uh, dual core, it's going to use the BSD.MP, not the BSD. I, I could have actually eliminated that one if I wanted to, um, but I went ahead and installed it anyway. All right, so it's going to go through the whole process here, uh, selecting one set at a time. It will bypass the MAN 61. It will bypass the GAME 61, and then uh, install everything else. So we'll just have to bear with it here momentarily. It shouldn't take very long at all. <clears throat> and um, let's talk about OpenBSD here. Uh, OpenBSD is a, a Berkeley software distribution. That's what the BSD stands for. It is Unix. It's a Unix-like operating system. And if you've ever used Mac OS, uh, Mac OS is uh, based off of Unix as well. So it's a Unix-like operating system. Uh, however, it uses uh, Darwin. It does not use the BSD kernel. The other thing about OpenBSD or any BSD is that it is not like Linux. It's not a distribution. Uh, it does not use the GNU Linux kernel. Instead, it uses a Unix kernel. Uh, so it is unique in that fashion. Uh, and uh, one thing I do like about uh, Unix here in the OpenBSD 6.1 environment, uh, or NetBSD, or FreeBSD, or GhostBSD, if you want to use that, is that it's based on Unix, and Unix is built with security from the ground up. And so that's uh, something that you can be assured that uh, uh, it's very safe, uh, very secure. Um, I think in the history of Unix, uh, there's only been two instances, perhaps even maybe just one, where uh, there were vulnerabilities in the Unix operating system that required uh, some major patching. Now, we do have to patch this operating system, and we'll do that toward the end. It's called syspatch, and you do need to implement that uh, in order to uh, make sure that your system is patched and secure uh, and up-to-date. Okay. If you're, if you're familiar with Linux, uh, that would be an update and upgrade. In the Unix world, it's called a syspatch. So you do need to pit syspatch your system occasionally. All right, so we're up to uh, share. The next one is xServe61, or the X server. And when we get that done, um, after the font's installed, uh, I believe that should be the last one that we have to install. All right, so this one's going to take a little bit longer. Fonts, um, I probably could have omitted this one too, but I went ahead and kept it. All right, it's about to wrap up the uh, the font 61. 
set, and then we'll move on into the uh, the final one, which is the Xserve 61. I believe that one's pretty small. Okay, all right. So let's pick up the last set, and yeah, it's not too big. Only about 30 second download. It's going to download it, verify it, um, and it's then going to install it after it does that. And then when we're done with that, it will go through the entire install process on the sets one by one. And this process is very quick, it's not, not long at all. All right. Um, okay, so once we're done with this, we just hit enter and look at the time here. Uh, it appears to be correct, date and time. So I'm going to just kind of hit yes here, select the default. And so it's going to create the inodes and come to a prompt. Now, what I need to do here is reboot. Now, I did not eject the install 61.iso from the virtual CD-ROM drive, so I did that intentionally. I want to let it boot up on the CD-ROM drive again, and then I'm going to eject it and then restart the VM. I've noticed when I don't do that, I can run into issues, so I'm, I'm going to let it go through that process. All right, so here I uh, go ahead and eject the uh, virtual CD-ROM file from that, which is install 61.iso, and then I'm going to restart the VM. So I'm going to power it off, and then I'm going to power it up, which is equivalent to a reboot. All right, so let's start it up again, let it boot up. Now this time it should boot up into the uh, hard drive, not the CD-ROM drive. So it should not take install 61.iso again. Okay, it looks like it is uh, booting up on the hard drive, the VDI that we created. Okay, starting the network, we've got an IP address, that's good. Uh, we've got a date and time set. And now we get a login. So now we're going to log in as root because we need to be root here to do this. I'm going to put in root's password that I set earlier. And then we're going to uh, start X, which is the X terminal. So that opens up X terminal for us here in a moment. Here it comes. Okay. All right. And so now I'm going to expand this and. Um, we can uh, work with it better. And this is the X terminal. We're going to do all our commands here in the X terminal. One of the first things we need to do is we need to get nano. So we're going to do a package add, which is the package manager for uh, Unix here. So we're going to do a package underscore add tack IV space nano and install nano. Once we get nano installed, uh, then we'll move on to the next phase. We're going to be using Nano quite a bit. Nano is an editor for files if you're not familiar with it. Kind of like Vim, a little bit different. Okay, now that we're done with that, we're going to issue a user mod command and tack capital G wheel data pioneer. So that's going to add data pioneer to the wheel group is necessary. And then we're going to run another package underscore add tech IV and we're going to install the XFCE um, desktop environment. Now this is going to take a while. Uh, it's pretty lengthy so at some point here I'm going to pause the video and, uh, and then come back after it's completed. So we'll let it run for a few lines here and then to show you what it's doing. Uh, and then I'll pause that video and we'll come back when it's completed. Now the um, um, XFCE environment is going to give us our GUI. Uh, so we won't be you know, in like a server environment. We'll be in an actual desktop environment. 
XFCE again is very light, so um, it doesn't require a lot of uh, installation requirements. It, uh, it's pretty robust, pretty fast, uh, but it's elementary. It's uh, pretty plain Jane, so but it's better than nothing. You can install GNOME and in, uh, other desktop environments, but I know how to do XFCE here fairly easily. All right, so it's clipping along here, installing XFCE in the X terminal, and um, continues on. All right, so we left, and then I came back. It's about 15 minutes uh, to, to complete this. And so the next phase we need to do, I'll put clear here, and we're going to do another package, add TAC IV, and we're going to install the slim theme, which is required for login purposes in XFCE. So once we get that installed, then we're going to utilize nano here for, on a couple of files. So let's issue the nano command. Uh, and we're going to get into the .xinitrc file. Uh, actually create it. It hasn't been created. We're going to put in exec space start xfce4 since that's the version we are using. And then we're going to hit control x and yes to save the file. It's very important. You need to do that. If you don't save it, it won't work. Alright, so let's now issue another nano command or actually I need to check first to see that we are in roots environment here in the root folder and we are and so now let's do a, um, a CD into home data pioneer forgot to do that and then we're going to once we're in the uh, my home directory here then we're going to issue that nano command and then we're going to create that dot and x, x and that RC file Put in the same uh, string that we put in the other one as root. So exec start xfce4. And then we're going to control x and yes to save the file. Alright, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and issue uh, nano against another file to get into that file. So nano uh, etsy rc.local. And then we're going to add a line here, slash user, slash local, slash bin, slash slim, and then space tack D. All right. And then we're going to do control X and yes to save this file. And then we're going to uh, clear the screen again. And then we're going to issue a nano against forward slash etsy forward slash rc dot conf dot local All right, create that file and then we've got a couple lines here we need to put in uh, xenodm so that's x e n o d m uh, underscore flags equals and then we're going to do a package underscore scripts. I need to type that in. Package underscore scripts equals quote dbus underscore daemon space avahi underscore daemon close quotes. That's very important. Make sure you close them. And then we're going to issue a dbus underscore enable equals yes all caps. And those are the only lines that we need to add here. And then we're going to do another control x and yes to save the file. We'll pause for a few seconds so you can copy that down. You can pa pause the video if you like and go back and pick that up if you need to. Alright, so now that we're back at the login uh, screen for here, for the uh, X terminal screen rather, we're going to issue another package underscore add tack IV. We're going to install VLC uh, and GIMP and Thunderbird. Um, we're not going to install the web browser Firefox at this point. We're going to, I'll do that later or you can do that later once you get into XFCE. Uh, you can do that right from the terminal. Uh, all you have to need to do is just do a package underscore add tack IV Firefox and then you can install it there. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start this process. Um, 
Not sure how long a VLC is going to take, but if it takes too long, I'll go ahead and pause the video and come back uh, so that you don't have to sit through the whole process of installation of VLC here in uh, OpenBSD. It looks like it's uh, tripping along here. is a little bit slow on installing some of the files so I probably will pause this uh, video at some point and then come back when it gets ready to install GIMP. Uh, the installation of GIMP and um, Thunderbird is not quite as long. And as I said earlier um, XFCE is pretty massive so it, even though it's a lightweight desktop environment it took about 15 minutes to install so not unusual. Uh, this has to be done, by the way, in the X terminal. You can't do it from a TTY or the um, virtual terminal. Um, I suppose you could, but you wouldn't want to. All right, we're back now. I paused the video, and so we're installing GIMP at this point. And uh, GIMP shouldn't take as long as uh, VLC did. We'll see how long it takes. It may have to pause the video again, but I don't think I will. This seemed to be uh, clipping right along here. So we'll have um, a media player. We'll have a uh, graphic manipulation image manipula manipula manipulation program. And then we'll have um, uh, a mail client as well when we get into the... Uh, GUI. Okay, so somewhere along in here we're going to be installing Thunderbird. I'm not going to stop the video because I know it doesn't take as long uh, to install GIMP as it did VLC. Only got a few more files to install. And by the way, all these files that you see that are being fetched and then uh, installed and verified and installed. These are binaries, uh, it's not regular files. So these are binary files. And so the installation actually is a compilation process uh, in X-Terminal for Unix. All right, so I think we got a couple more lines perhaps in GIMP and then we'll get into Thunderbird. There we go. Thunderbird, it's now installing. And it should be fairly quick. <clears throat> Alright, so I think this may be the final file for Thunderbird. It might be might be a couple more. Um, this one's taking a little bit longer. And we're just about finished here with uh, getting this set up for XFCE. Okay, so let's see. There we go. We're through with Thunderbird. All right, so let's go ahead and um, clear the screen here. And then, uh, or actually forgot, yeah, let's, before we clear the screen, let's run syspatch. Started to issue a clear command, but I remembered we needed to do a syspatch here. Um, there are probably, at this point, for OpenBSD 6.1, there's probably 39 uh, files that need to be patched into the operating system. I'm not going to bore you with the complete installation of that. Uh, we'll watch four or five of these, and then I'll go ahead and stop the video and then come back once the system has been dispatched. I believe there are 39 of these. So we're at number three. We're at number four right now, I believe. And uh, we'll go ahead and stop the video.
after this uh, fifth one has been installed. Okay, so there were 39 patched uh, files there for patching. So let's go ahead and clear the screen here. Uh, and the last thing we need to do is do a final reboot of the system. So I issue a reboot command, the X terminal. And that's going to go back out to the uh, virtual terminal, the TTY. And it should log in. And we come in, it should be a login screen after it boots up. Hopefully, we did everything right. Okay, it's going through the normal boot process, and there's our login screen. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. I think. Um, Login is uh, root. No, wait a minute. I think um, instead of root, I think I'm going to log in as Data Pioneer. So I'll give it that password for my user account. And then this should bring us up to XFCE, hopefully. There we go. This is the welcome to the first start of the uh, panel. So we're going to click on the use default. And uh, this is at XFCE. Uh, and I'm I cannot install VM tools in you, uh, OpenBSD, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a factor of 125% on this screen to make it bigger. Um, there are no uh, Oracle VirtualBox VM editions um, that can be installed that I'm aware of in OpenBSD, unfortunately, so I can't get the resolution higher than 1024 by 968. All right, so I issued an IF config command here, and you can see I have an IP address of 192.168.1.238. Let's clear the screen here. Let's do an SSH into my remote server, see if SSH is working. So I'm going to do SSH root at 192.168.1.157. That's my personal cloud. I'm going to say yes here, and then give the password for root. And it looks like I mistyped it, so yeah. Let me go ahead and re-enter that password. Okay, I'm in. All right, let me change directory to shares, uh, public on the public side, and to a folder called or directory called shared pictures. I have to put quotes around it. And then let's do a listing out of that. And you can see what's in there. And this is being shared out on the public side of my um, personal cloud. All right, so let's go ahead and exit here, get out of the terminal, clear the screen, and then exit out of the terminal, get back to the desktop. So let's click on the application and see what we have here. Um, you've got under settings, uh, various things here, and so let's click on desktop, and you can see you can change your desktop wallpaper. I don't have any images to use here, so I'm not going to do it. I'm uh, just going to show you that you can do that. So we got menu tab, icons tab. Uh, so you can change the size of your icons, etc., etc. Let's click close. Click on applications and go down to settings again. And then let's look at appearance. So the style that we have right now is XFCE. I'm going to do XFCE 4.4 and then close. All right, uh, I'm going to click on Applications again, come down to uh, Settings one more time here, and let's get into File Manager. So for your File Manager preferences, you can change, you know, things like uh, side panel behavior and advanced, etc., uh, etc. Et so, you know, it's standard um, GUI interface here. XFCE is fairly light, so you're not going to have as many as you would perhaps have for GNOME. Uh, GNOME 3.6.2 I think is the latest. Alright, so here let's click on Workspace. I've got four set up. And uh, so the other thing here is I'm trying to get back to my Workspace and since I can't 
install the VM additions. Uh, I'm having a little trouble, but here I think I finally got to it. Okay, so that's the second desktop, third desktop, fourth desktop here. All right, so we got four workspaces. All right, uh, so let's click on Applications and go down to, uh, well, let's see what we want to do here. You can see you've got the Applications folder. Uh, you've got the, the time here, so local time set up. Um, and let's get to graphics. You've got the GNO, uh, GIMP. Internet, there's Mozilla. Uh, Office, you've got that as well. And system, uh, the terminal, etc., etc. Let's look at about XFCE. And this is your XFCE desktop environment explanation. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, at this point, go down to the bottom and take a look at a couple of things here. Here is your uh, terminal file manager. So let's uh, open up the file manager here if we can and take a look at that. So we've just got the desktop. We don't have anything else. So we can create the other folders that we need, you know, like music, pictures, videos, etc. Uh, they're not created right now. You can use the make dir command to do that. Um, and so, let's see, that's the web browser, that's the application uh, finder, and then there's, again, the uh, home directory, okay, for Data Pioneer. All right, so this is XFCE, we're in the GUI, and let's go ahead and log out, and I'm going to log out here, and get back to a login screen, and I'm going to come down, and then I'm going to close um, the OpenBSD 6.1, same as if I were to shut it down. All right, so this has been uh, a demonstration of OpenBSD 6.1 installing the GUI. Have a nice day.